What's the backup? There is no backup. Trust me. This is it. Come on. Good morning, Michael. So how are you doing? Good to speak to you. Doing good, Howard. How are you doing? I'm really, really good. Congratulations to me. Wow, I loved it. I loved it a bit. Uh, I'm, oh. a, I'm a big fan of... Uh, I, mean, I don't want to... To pigeonhole you with the with the people you've worked with before, but I'm a big fan of of Justin and Aaron's work before, and this is kind of in the same same kind of realm. So congratulations! It's just it's right up there with that, those kind of films. Brilliant, I loved it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're a hive mind having worked on movies together for ten years. So uh, yeah. very much an honor to be in the same company. Thank you. So I mean. Talking about, I mean, having you, you've worked with them beforehand as an editor, because I mean, you, you basically cut your teeth as an editor for for many years. So I'm quite curious um, if the film came about because it was very kind of you you were able to manage time by editing in your previous films, or you could kind of eliminate eliminate things that you wanted to kind of erase. Was that a sort of genesis for this film in a roundabout way? Uh, yeah, in a way, like I think working with Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead allowed me to have the confidence to know what works and doesn't work in that space. Um, I've kind of lived in the sci-fi space since I was a kid. My whole family works within science-based careers. You know, my my dad's an engineer, my mom's a doctor, and my sister is a doctor in genetics. So I'm the weird black sheep in, with the art <laughs> form uh, yeah. job. And uh, so I kind of, you know, their love for the movies that I worked on with Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead gave me confidence to be working within that space. And then the genesis came from just honestly, just living in this world of time travel, pitching some stories to my dad. And then once I was able to get that across, uh, Benson and Moorhead were, and, and Rustic Films with Dave Lawson as well, just being a champion for the whole movie and getting us to the level we needed to be and uh, make the movie. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Ashley. Yeah. I just wanted to stay on the, the, the point um, about um, being an editor coming into this as your debut feature, you've obviously picked a really complex um, subject in time travel to, to, to start with because of your editing experience. Did that give you more confidence that the film that you were going to, you know, make was going to be incredibly cohesive and avoid a lot of the, the you know, the plot holes that um, some of these big Hollywood movies tend to fall down in quite frequently? Yeah, I think for me, it's great. Editing has been such a... Uh a great tool set to learn from, not just like it, a one for the, uh, the indie side. I've seen so many movies that I've worked on or given notes on where they try to shoot for a studio budget on an indie level and they swing and miss. So I learned how to make a true indie film and what really works, which is just executing really well with the scope and scale and budget you have. But then also with time travel, I see so many things non-linearly anyway. I'm given movies that are hours long in total bits and pieces, and I have to figure out a timeline through them. So, you know, while I'll, I think I, I have this theory where every director that comes to be a director usually leans on the job that they had beforehand as their like pedestal to like really lean on when things get tough. And for me, it was editing. So I was able to like confidently go on to set, know where to put the camera and what will cut together, but also have the confidence to be like, here's this time travel movie that I think is really going to work already because I already edited it a lot in my head of how the story beats are going to go. So I think my skill set and history as an editor really helped me give confidence to just go and do a time travel movie as my first movie, which is genuinely insane. <laughs> Uh-huh. At the same time, I mean, we were speaking to your, you. your two protagonists and um, I know that Adam was kind of, he had a lot of questions for you. I know that Riley kind of, she didn't want to know as much. She wanted to kind of keep it more secret. So she kind of dived into it head first. No, I'm quite curious. Is the inspired of you having kind of written the script and devised everything that you were going to direct with this timeline and everything. When it came to, t- to the time to kind of explain this to someone that, you, that knew nothing about your premise, how did was that was that easy to explain and get it over to you? And um, did you try and keep things to yourself to keep them on the toes, the actors? The actors, yeah, you're exactly right. Where they had read the script, and when they were casted, they had 
auditioned with the two toughest scenes, which they were the character based scenes. There's two scenes where they're there's one scene where they're drinking and listening to music. And then there's one scene where they're fighting over what has, what this whole house is about. Um, so they were pretty well versed into the movie. And when they jumped in, I, I have my easy pitch, which is just like, Hey, here's the easy thing. Here's a brother and sister commit a robbery and they go hide away in a safe house. That is actually a hides them away in time. It's very easy pitch and very helps them get their head around it. Um, but then when, you know, starts to get into the weeds of the plot who controls the house what they want them to do uh i leave that to as much as they want whatever helps them with their process and gets them a headspace that's as much information as i want to give them so i remember i was with adam and i think we just were on a zoom call for an hour and he just went through the entire thing and he's like i want to know it all because for him that allowed him to know where he could set his boundaries and not trip over something unknown and be lost by surprise on set Otherwise, Riley, Riley is like really wanted to be in the headspace of where Sydney was, which is I am following the lead of this of my brother who has this book that has instructions. I'm going to trust him one more time, but it's going to be I need to feel the fear. I need to feel the confusion. And I and if I know anything, it might tell in my face or something like that. So uh, I feel like it's just whatever is best for everyone's processes, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, was there a specific um, reason as to why you chose um, a, a pair of siblings as your main protagonists? Um, because obviously there's the personal side of things in terms of you having that initial discussion with your father after, after seeing a movie about this seed of an idea. Um, and um, I think uh, I saw you sort of, moving your arm about you've got, got you, the tattoo the wrist. did i did i see that so, so this the, the i got sibling sport so this i got after the movie came out just as like hey we did it the movie was oh, celebration. Afterwards. but okay. this but this is the tattoo that inspired the actual tattoo in the movie right um this triforce tattoo that's on my arm uh yeah a lot of this is based off a, I'm just glad that there's more brother and sister stories being told in movies. It's an unexplored dynamic that I feel like is ripe for um, uh, a digging. And for me, as a brother to a sister and sister brother, um, I just wanted to explore some of the dynamics between my own sister, who are very close, but we're sadly just not seeing each other as much as we should just because we live different lives. She has kids. I work in the film industry across the country. And so I just wanted to explore this like, hey, we were close, but now we're not as close. How do you wrestle with that? How do you wrestle with that dynamic? And I explored it through this relationship between Joseph and Sydney. And so that's that tattoo we got is like, she has the same tattoo on her arm. And we just sometimes, you know, whenever we have a bad day, I would just take a picture of my tattoo and send it to her with no context whatsoever. And she would just send her tattoo picture back to me, no context. So it's just an unspoken secret brother, sister thing that I love. And I wanted to explore it deeply in this movie for sure. Well, that, that must have, I mean, I don't uh, want to get into uh, your, your personal life, but that must have really uh, yeah. helped your relationship. I mean, I imagine you you, you told this to you, to your sister now that it, it kind of was inspired around your relationship and it must have you must have built up a, a kind of a, a closer relationship from from kind of telling her that it was that was how oh, you feel yeah. about sex no yeah oh yeah we 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 love each other and it's just it's literally one of those things where you go like hey let's go hop on a zoom and let's catch up and then uh you forget to set a time and then blink a year goes by and you're just like oh my god wait, did we ever do that Zoom call? Did we just text each other? Or when was the last time we called each other? Time just slips so easily. Um, so luckily she seen the movie. She saw it during Cut's process and gave her notes. And then she saw it when she, we had it at the Chattanooga Film Festival here in Tennessee. Or in Tennessee. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been a good excuse to just keep, it, it got the text chains back up. It got the calls back up. It got Zoom conversations going again. So if anything, it's really nice to just have this movie as like, hey, reminder, wake up call, call your 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 sibling. Bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually. Um, the <laughs> the um, film itself is really thought provoking because it poses like the like, oh, rather like the big that it poses is how do we as humans kind of 
um, you think audiences or what you hope audiences will will take away um, with with that notion in mind. And also, I understand you had your premiere at the SXSW uh, Festival. What was that like as well? You know, seeing it with an audience and maybe you know speaking to some. It was fun after. at at South by to go like, hey, here's a bunch of people coming up to me, and you know, it, people just start pitching you theories about what happens, which is really the the whole point of this movie is to just inspire conversation like my family had after sci-fi movies. But I think my goal is to, you could either be in one and two camps. You can either be like diving deep into the theories, going through the bottomless well of hints and, and red herrings or theories that connect to each other, just like Sydney's character in the movie, or you could curse the gods and get mad at the guy who made the movie and go, I don't understand it. it is you trapped me and I feel <laughs> frustrated like Joseph's character. In the movie. <laughs> so uh, it's designed for people to wrestle with. And I think somebody who wrestles with movies, I wrestle with movies all the time. I feel like those are the ones I cherish the most, the older I get, I get less into movies that give me a nice bow and let me leave the theater. Like there's a time and place for those movies, but I just think about those movies inherently less. I grow up more and more wanting a movie that challenges me and wrestles me. And I hope this is a movie that challenges a lot of audiences. Definitely. And I'm, and I'm sure at the same yeah, time, think, as, sorry, yeah. actually. Yeah, no, I was, I was going to say, yeah, it, it definitely does. And the mark, I've always said that the mark of a great movie for me is one that kind of stays with you long afterwards. I, wa I watched the, the movie at the weekend and it's like been the first thing I've been thinking of in the mornings when I wake up, you know, with my morning tea, I'm, I'm still processing it. So mission accomplished. Exactly, oh, good. Yeah. Thank you so much. But at the same time, I mean, yeah. actually you said yeah, that you, you were kind of mulling over it over a cup of tea. I imagine you've had plenty of time as well uh, to, to mull over what you've written and maybe even come up with further ideas to expand this universe, no? Yeah, absolutely. I do have a a treatment for what happens after and uh there's definitely i've talked about it with the actors it's one of those things that you're just like oh yeah when should we when should we tackle it to like really fill in the audience i want the audience to fill in these little gaps maybe see what is life with this movie if it was just as is but we are very excited to see like hey it seems like we have a lot of people just hungry for more which is exciting um, so it's definitely something we're ruminating on for a possible sequel or prequel or both. So, uh, it's definitely, definitely in the back of our heads for sure. Mm -hmm. Ashley, do you want to finish off with one last question? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, just a, a little more light hearted, uh, final question, really. Um, without giving anything away, we've got what I refer to as the magic cupboards. Um, in the movie that are magically replenished with all sorts of, of goodies, including copious amounts of booze. Um, <laughs> if you were in that, that situation, what sort of essential items would we be finding popping up in your, your refrigerator or, or your drink cabinet? Oh my God, that's such a good question. Um, <laughs> I am a fiend for just chips and salsa it's my favorite snack and i'll just have it i order it like in mass and then devour <laughs> like a costco size in a week so if i were just to have that be in my cupboard all the time my gosh me and my wife will just devour it it would be the best <laughs> i know it's a plain answer but that's what i always crave for it i guess all the time that's a just perfect to, answer that's exactly just, but just to want. add to that though uh, was, i know you i mean you don't read a, a whole great deal of books but i know that your parents send you a lot of books so I'm quite curious, what book would you take with you to the house as well? I know you had the employees mm -hmm. was one book that was on your to be read list in the press in the press kit. Yeah, I yeah we just just finished that. It's so awesome. Um, I guess whatever if if we had a book that was put into a cupboard and put in, I would just whatever my dad if my dad was at the other end filling that the the cabinet with books, he would just I just want him to give me the next Hugo winner that he loved. He's going through all the Hugo winners right now right. for science fiction, so. He just sends, he actually just mails me books. He mailed me the employees. He said, read this and read this with Jory, uh, my wife. Um, I will just have that replenished. So right now it'll be any book that he recommends, to be honest. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time. It's a fantastic movie. I can't wait oh, for people you. to see it. I can't wait to see it again as well, because it's one of those movies that you just need to yeah. see again and again and again. And I hope to speak to you again Second sometime soon about another movie or a sequel, prequel or whatever comes next. 
Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Yes, I'm oh, happy you, to talk to you. This was awesome. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the movie. Thank you for your time. That's great. Take care of yourself. So, All right, have a good day. Michael. Cheers, Michael. Pleasure talking to you. Cool. Take care, Goodbye. guys. Yes, take Bye. care. Bye. Three down on the count of five. Five. Four. Three.